Hi there, and welcome to a short presentation on path tracing, specifically real-time path tracing. Here we're going to explain on a high level the components that you need to implement a performant real-time path tracer. My name is Brian Dudash, and I work for NVIDIA's Developer Technology Group. First, a bit of a disclaimer. This is going to be a short presentation covering concepts and SDKs. It's intended to provide you with some keywords and context into various technologies, which should help you when you do your own investigation into path tracing. While there is some technical detail here, I will leave most of it to other GDC and GTC presentations, as well as various online references. I do assume basic familiarity with computer graphics, as well as some fundamentals of path tracing. So we're going to cover things quickly. Real-time path trace games are already out there. Quake 2 RTX, Minecraft with RTX, and more recently, Portal with RTX. It's also becoming more practical in modern games. Ray tracing overdrive mode in Cyberpunk 2077 will be added with path tracing. As of this recording, it's not quite released, but may be out by the time you watch it. It also features a lot of the technologies in this talk, so you should definitely check it out. But why is real-time path tracing interesting in general? Well, there's a number of use cases for real-time path tracing. First off, if you improve the performance of an existing reference accumulating path tracer, this could help improve artist productivity today, as you can have close to real-time ground truth comparisons against your existing real-time non-path trace techniques. You could also add a high quality photo mode where the base game is rasterized, possibly with ray tracing. Then at some point, the gamer says, okay, I want a high quality screenshot of the scene. They press a button and they wait a half second and they get an extremely high quality path traced beautiful photo. Lastly, we have the ultimate goal that we're targeting, which is real-time ultra quality mode for your game, something that can provide the best visual experience at fast frame rates. Before we get into the challenges of authoring a real-time path tracer, let's quickly review the core mechanics of path tracing and set up this scene we'll refer to later on for different techniques. Here's a ray of light. It's going from a light source to that cloud. This particular ray happens to bounce off the cloud and it happens to shoot towards this tree where it hits a green leaf. Red and blue light is absorbed by the leaf, and then the ray can be re-emitted essentially in any direction from the surface randomly. This example happens to shoot off into the sky and then into space. Each of these lines is called a path segment, and the entire path of the light is referred to as the path. But this path is not that useful to us because the camera is way over there on the left and the light didn't go anywhere near it. So usually, Path tracers take advantage of the fact that paths are reversible. Instead of tracing paths starting at the light source, we trace paths starting at the camera, like this. This way, both paths will contribute something to the image, but not all paths are equal. And we'll talk about this a little later on. I would like to also note that ray tracing is different than path tracing. Ray tracing is simply tracing a single ray into the scene from a start and end location. Path tracing uses ray tracing to trace various path segments in the scene to solve the rendering equation. So what does it take to make a real-time path tracer? Here's a pipeline of what we think a real-time path tracer should look like. We're going to cover this briefly right now, and then we'll come back to it at the end of this talk after we have touched in light detail about the challenges and solutions involved. Briefly, you start off with some primary visibility to determine which surfaces need lit. And then you move on to the lighting pipeline, where you process direct illumination, indirect illumination, and maybe you've got some kind of radiance cache for terminating long paths. And then you need to denoise, which is essential with low sample or pixel counts. Finishing up with upscaling and some of your own post-processing pipeline. Now, within that pipeline that I just laid out, there's a number of essential components to getting to real-time performance. I'll list a couple of them here. First off is important sampling. For real-time performance, we need to keep extremely low sample counts, and you need to be smart about sampling to ensure your samples are high quality. Additionally, real-time denoising also depends on good sampling to be effective. Next up, you need some kind of dynamic radiance caching or irradiance caching to terminate those long, diffuse paths. There's a number of options, and we'll talk about them a little later on. You also need real-time denoising because whatever you do, your sample count is not going to be sufficient to avoid noise, and you need to get rid of that noise. Finally, there are a couple of optimization techniques targeting common bottlenecks in path tracing. 
Fortunately, we have solutions in place for all of these components, and I'll go over them lightly now. They'll all be rolled into a path tracing SDK that I'll cover at the end. But first, let's cover the components. So first on the list was important sampling. We've got a library called RTX-DI, which stands for RTX Direct Illumination, but it also provides important sampling and resampling functions of different light types across direct and indirect paths. Resampling is the process of reusing samples that have been discovered to be good. Resampling happens in both spatial and temporal domains, supporting various light sources such as emissive meshes, analytical lights, and environment maps. But where in our path tracing scene would we use important sampling? In our proposed path tracing pipeline, we use RTXDI resampling light in the scene. There are three components from RTXDI that we can use for spatio-temporal resampling. The first one is the Reister algorithm. This is used for the primary surface. For light sampling beyond the primary surface, we use Regear. In Regear, light resampling is done in world space on a grid. Reister GI is also used to enhance the Reister DI on the primary surface by resampling indirect paths in screen space. Speaking of indirect paths, next up is the problem of long indirect paths. The problem is that we have indirect light from long diffuse paths that tends to either contribute little to the final image or it contributes a lot of noise, unless you trace in large number of bounces. But what if we could shorten these paths by sampling into an approximation of radiance for some path segment? This is one thing you can use RTX GI SDK to do. You can terminate the indirect paths early by sampling into radiance cache. In an upcoming RTX GI 2.0 SDK release, we will include NRC, or Neural Radiance Cache, which is a deep learning based radiance cache. The RTX GI SDK currently contains an older DDGI implementation for probe based irradiance. So please note the NRC release is planned for the future. Currently, only DDGI is supported. And then we have denoising. NRD is a collection of denoising algorithms. These are already in use in multiple published titles for various purposes so they're battle-tested, and they are also real-time. However, integrating them into a path tracer is a little bit more involved, so I'd highly recommend you check out the more in-depth guide from our GDC presentation on how to build a path tracer. It goes into much more detail. Let's talk about alpha testing. Modern game engines use a lot of alpha testing. In this example, all the leaves in the tree use alpha testing. Other common examples are grass and chain-link fencing. For this to work in ray tracing, we must use an AnyHit shader or equivalent inline shader code. This means the GPU has to leave the fast fixed function intersections and invoke shaders to perform alpha testing. This can be somewhat costly. While it might not be a problem for small amounts of alpha test geometry, other scenes, like this large forest, can be a real drag on performance. And it was specifically for this use case that we developed a hardware feature of the ADA 4000 series called Opacity Micromaps. The goal of this feature is to reduce, or in some cases eliminate, all calls to the NHIT shader. It is implemented by using an efficient fixed subdivision of base triangles into micro triangles onto which we can store compact opacity state information. The key feature here is that the hardware RT cores can directly understand this format. So in many cases, it can prevent calls to the any hit shaders altogether. You encode the billboard's alpha texture into microtriangle state. In this image, the green microtriangles represent hits, light blue are no hit, and the yellow microtriangles along the edge are on the border. So they must run any hit shaders and sample the texture for accurate details. We also provide an SDK to generate this new data. The OMM Bake SDK can generate opacity micromap on a CPU or GPU. So you can choose how and where you integrate it into your pipeline. Next up is the problem of divergence in path tracing. Let's go back to the original drawing to explain the problem. It's interesting to notice that when we start ray tracing, our initial set of rays is mostly coherent. Nearby rays often hit the same surface, load the same mesh and textures, and have the same shaders. But as soon as they start bouncing, they usually start going everywhere in an unpredictable way. Some 
continue bouncing around, some terminate early and some later. After a couple of bounces, they're all mixed up, different shaders executing, loading different state. This is what we mean by divergent. And this is a problem when executing even on the CPU, especially for distributed rendering, because you want to compute similar tasks together at the same time on the same compute unit in order to benefit from cache and execution coherency. So it's not a surprise that there have been many good solutions over the years, usually relying on sorting similar tasks together. On the GPU side, this is a more of a magnified problem because it's a platform designed for massively parallel execution of coherent instruction streams. So one, in, one compute unit, we call them streaming multiprocessors, one SM can usually execute 32 identical instructions at the same time. But if these instructions are different, or if there's branching, it has to process each set serially. What if we could somehow sort the tasks on the GPU? Starting with eight of 4,000 series GPUs, we can't, using shader execution reordering. On the top, we see unsorted compute tasks spawned during path tracing. We see execution inefficiency because only identical code paths can execute together on a single SM. But then below, we see SER enabled, sorting the tasks, all on chip, so parallelism can be much better utilized. This all happens while we're path tracing, multiple times within a single regen dispatch. Okay, we've covered several components required for real-time path tracing. But I want to mention that all of these components that I just covered are wrapped up into a single SDK that you can grab right now called the RTX Path Tracing SDK. It's an SDK in the traditional sense as it's a code sample, not a black box. It's not an opaque library. It strives to embody years of art and neural graphics research and experience into a single SDK that focuses on path tracing. Due to its very permissive licensing, you can cherry pick what you like directly into your own engine. All techniques are based on NVIDIA's Falcor Research Path Tracer. Here is some eye candy for the Path Tracing SDK. It shows some nice nested dielectrics. Okay, so let's go back to the original Path Tracer pipeline that I showed at the beginning. We've got our primary visibility. This can be generated via ray tracing or rasterization. It doesn't matter. Then you start the lighting pipeline. And here we do direct illumination. And we use Reister DI for screen space light sampling. Indirect illumination, multi-bounce sampling with Reister GI, path reuse, regear for world space light sampling. Here we can also use SER to sort rays for coherence and get optimal execution. We're targeting maybe 2 to 30 bounces for indirect illumination path segments. Next, we have dynamic radius cache, like NRC in RTX GI, which can terminate long diffuse paths by reusing those segments, allowing you to calculate less bounces. Then we move on to post-processing pipeline, and we have our denoising. NRD can provide denoising, of course, but it's also worth noting that DLSS super resolution will remove some noise during the upscale process. And then there's the upscaling itself. With DLSS super resolution, it allows you to render at a lower resolution, giving yourself a lot more performance as path tracing performance scales with the number of rendered pixels. After upscaling, you have your own post-processing pipeline. And then finally, maybe you can add in AI frame generation to get yourself even more performance in the in-betweens using DLSS FG. And that's basically it for the different components that we think are the most important to make a real-time path tracer. If you want to get started and you're not exactly sure where to begin, we've got a slide here with some advice. The first thing, of course, is to grab the path tracing SDK and just take a look at the code sample run it, understand what they're doing with the shader code, and look at C++ to get a feel for the space. Then assuming you have your own engine that has some sort of BVH management shader tables and perhaps has ray tracing implemented already, you can implement yourself a classic reference path tracer by accumulating over time. You're targeting thousands or hundreds of thousands of samples per pixel accumulated over many frames. It will be very slow, but it should also be very beautiful and then you can start making it faster. 
the next step might be to start reducing the samples per pixel to hundreds and go for a high quality photo mode. This is where you can add in important sampling using RTX DI. Then, as you still have a fairly large number of samples per pixel, you should consider some kind of traditional denoising, like NVIDIA Optics denoiser. After that, when you've got that working and looking good, you move on to full real-time mode by further reducing your samples and removing cross-frame accumulation. Targeting one sample per pixel, using RTX DI for important sampling and limiting your indirect path segments using RTX GI for termination. Also using opacity micromaps for any alpha test foliage you have and adding in NRD for fast denoising of the low samples per pixel pass. And that's it, that's how you get started. If you get all that done, you'll have a really nice path tracing mode for your title. So as this was just a short talk, I was not able to go into too much technical detail about the components of the path tracing SDK. Fortunately, we do have a number of presentations at GDC and GTC this year covering these topics. Uh, they're listed on the slide here for your review. I'd like to call out the How to Build a Real-Time Path Tracer presentations by Ollie Wright at GDC and Philip Struger at GTC. These go into much more technical detail about the components of the path tracing SDK. My talk today is the short form version of their presentation. Uh, and finally, here is a list of references. These should all be linked down in the description, but I'm also including them here for completeness. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope this helps you make your path tracing uh, faster, and I hope we provided some information that was good for you. I also look forward to seeing all the beautiful real-time rendering that you guys come up with in the future. Thanks again.